Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a resilience pattern which is a must for most services part of a distributed systems architecture and that is the circuit breaker. Now, some of you might be familiar with the term, it is actually coming from the electrical world and circuit breakers are what you hopefully have in your house right now to protect you from certain things. So we're going to see how that concept has been adapted to the software engineering world and what it provides for us and our services. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. All right, so let me show you what I have here. So I have a weather forecast API over here and all it really does is it has an iWeather client and it's getting a city from the route over here and then I have an open weather client with an API key to call a real uh, API that is the open weather API so my HTTP client here has been configured to call that and if I went ahead and I run my API and then I go to Postman just to show you how it works then as you can see I can call that and I'm getting the weather for London and this has been the actual weather for London via the open weather map API call and I can change that if I want to Paris and so on so I'm going to get uh, the appropriate country and city and then all the details for the weather. Now in a previous video I showed you how you can add retries to this operation to make it more resilient. Now whatever you're gonna see in this video can be added on top of that but then you might have to tweak the retry policy a little bit. We're gonna talk about that in this video. Now the main concern that we have here is that we're calling a third-party API. We're calling this uh, API dot open weather map and many things can go wrong. We can uh, run out of uh, tokens because it is uh, a rate limited API so we cannot call it as many times as we want from our end. Uh, it can also go down, it can respond badly. So, so many things can happen. So what we want to do is to make sure that anything we do with this API is resilient and we have backups in case something happens. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how you can add retries to this exact example and this will work, but what I'm going to show you now with Circuit Breaker can actually take this concept to a whole new level. Now, before I show you how to implement a Circuit Breaker, we need to understand what is a Circuit Breaker. So I'm going to bring the whiteboard just to show you with a graph what we're trying to achieve. All right, here we go. So what I want to do is I want to draw a simple uh, electrical circuit here. Now, imagine that there is more things here. I'm just going to color them in a different way. Like this is not the full circle. There's more things that we cannot see here. And now what I want to add is a couple of components. So I'm going to add an LED over here and I want to add a battery over here. Now in this example, we can assume that the circuit is closed, meaning that the LED is actually shining. However, if something goes wrong with any of the components downstream, let's say something here, or it could be anything upstream as well, I'm just simplifying the graph I'm making, then we might have a breaker. And what the breaker will do is it will pop open to save all the downstream components. So now with the circuit breaker open, because there is no connection over here, the flow is interrupted. So when we say state open, that's why we say that, because it looks like an open door interrupting the flow. But if it is in a closed state, then electricity is flowing. Now, what did I say here? I said open means no flow in the system, closed means flow in the system because the system is healthy. And then I also said that this thing pops open when there's a fault in the system to protect the rest of the components. This is exactly the idea and the concept we're going to take from electricity and put it into software engineering. So let's see how that translates for us. What do we have here? Well, we have an API over here where we don't control anything about it, how healthy it is, how it can recover, when it will recover, how it's going to rate limit us. There's so many things here. Now, for the purposes of the examples and just to make it easy for you to visualize the problem and the solution, I'm going to use a locally rolled flaky API, which responds with the weather in the same way that this other API would as well. However, I'm going to be running it locally and I can actually pass a F equals true flag. And if I do that, then the thing will actually fail and I can visualize a problem. So if I go ahead and I run my flaky API right now, and then I go ahead and I debug my weather forecast API. So as you can see, if I go here and I call Paris with F equals false, then it all works fine. If I say F equals true, 
then it fails with a 500 and I'm getting a JSON serialization exception over here. So this will help us visualize the problem. Now, how can we take that concept and implement it in our code? Well, we're going to start with something very basic and we're going to say that if an amount of errors happen, then open the circuit. What we're going to do while the circuit is open is up to us, but it means that as long as it is open for a given period of time, there is no request that will go to that API. Now, to implement the circuit breaker, I'm actually going to add Poly, a NuGet package that will make this extremely easy for us. We could implement it manually, but we don't need to. So we're going to go ahead and add Poly, and I'm not going to add the Poly package, the standalone version. I'm going to use the microsoft.extensions.http.poly and I'm going to do that because it adds integration with the HTTP client, which we will be using later. So now that I have that, I can go up here and I can define my circuit breaker. So I can say private read only async circuit breaker policy, and that's going to be on the HTTP response message object. And that means that policy now is reusable. So circuit breaker equals that. And now I can use Poly's Fluent API to define what I want to happen. So policy and the type is, of course, the HTTP response message. I want to handle the HTTP request exception or transient HTTP error. And that is a method coming from that package, the Microsoft version. And then I'm going to say circuit breaker async, the simple circuit breaker, and then I have a few things I can define. So first we have the handled events allowed before breaking. So how many exceptions or bad results can happen before the circuit breaks open? So in my case, I'm going to say three. If three things fail with these instructions, then open the circuit and prevent it from going and calling that API any further, therefore protecting it. And I can then say open the circuit for a period of from seconds 10. Now I could leave it here, but there's more things I could define. For example, if something happens on breaking open or on resetting or on half open, and we're going to explain what half open is as well. Then as you can see, there are delegates which you can implement to do certain things as things are open or closed or are in a half open state. And now that I have the circuit breaker, what I can do is use it here. So I can say await circuit breaker dot execute async and then I'm going to wrap that into uh, a delegate over here and that's it now our call to this API has been wrapped with that circuit breaker pattern let's go ahead and run the flaky API and the forecast API and let's see what this does now so I'm going to start with the good request so I'm going to say f equals false and this all works as you can see happy days but if I go ahead and I say true and I fail three times let's see one two now I'm gonna go back to the happy state so it only failed twice now that's in a happy state that circuit counter in this case has reset in this simple circuit breaker and if I go back and I say true I can say one two and I'm gonna say three and now the circuit is open so if I call again as you can see the circuit is open and it's not allowing any calls. And if I was debugging this, I calling this, you would be able to see over here in the circuit breaker that the circuit state was open. Now it is half open. Now, what does half open means? Well, half open means I'm going to give you a shot to show me if you are now healthy. If you are not, then even one request that fails is enough to put me back in an open state. But if you succeed, I'm going to go back to close. Let's remove the breakpoint and see that in action. So I'm going to go back to healthy and it all works, right? The circuit is now closed. And then I'm going to go true and I'm going to say one, two, three. And now we failed. And I'm going to wait for 10 seconds. Now, at this point, and I think, uh, uh, okay. 10 seconds passed. At this point, if I run again, then this will be in a half open state. Meaning that if I say fail true, then it will give me one shot. But if I fail again, then as you can see, it didn't have to fail three times. It checked for that time, it failed, and then it went back to an open state. And it will go back to a closed state as long as the half open state actually accepts a request that responds appropriately. And this should be now and we're back into a closed state and this is basically the concept now the problem with this approach is that it is very naive and very i don't know 
basically amateur or very simple. Yes, technically you have a circuit breaker, but it is not how you would really want to have a circuit breaker in a real system. In a real system, you do want to have an advanced circuit breaker. And what is an advanced circuit breaker? Well, it's actually really, really cool. So the first property here is a failure threshold, meaning that how many of the requests in a given period of time need to be a failure for me to open the circuit. So let's say if, mm, I don't know, half the requests, so 0.5 is 50%, 0.6 is 60%, and so on. So the failure threshold is a double. Then I need to define what I want this sampling period to be. So time span from seconds. So if 50% of the requests fail in a 10 second period in this case, then what I want the minimum throughput of those requests to be on that 10 second, because if you have two and one fails and one succeeds, you probably don't want to pop the circuit open. So let's say in my case, just to make it manageable in 10 requests. So in this case, if five of them succeed and five of them fail, then the circuit will pop open. And then how long I want the duration of the break to be. So from seconds, 15 seconds, be open and then try to recover. And now this is a way more realistic approach to a circuit breaker for a distributed system because you're evaluating a bigger sample of data and you're not just saying if three things consecutively fail, then that's it. Now you're saying 50% of all the requests within that 10 second period with a minimum of 10 requests in that 10 second period, then pop the circuit open. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run this API over here and let's see how this works in practice. So here we go. Requests work. The circuit is closed. Everyone is happy. Now I'm going to do one, two, three, four failed requests. And then I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five. I didn't hit the 10 second period, did it? Okay, I'm going to have to be quick on this one. So um, excuse me if I don't say anything. So we have all the good ones. And then I go fail, 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 fail. And then the circuit goes open. And now it cannot accept for those 15 seconds and requests, even if this would respond with the right response, it will not actually do anything because the circuit is open. Now, 15 seconds will pass and now it is open again. And this is a way better approach to implement a circuit breaker for your system. Now, implementing the circuit breaker and popping it open is only really half the job because you should have a fallback strategy usually when something pops open. Now, what that fallback strategy could be for you really depends on what you're applying the circuit breaker on. In my case, it might be that I'm just giving people the last available weather for that specific city because the weather for the day doesn't really change that quickly. So maybe for that time frame of the thing recovering, I can actually cache one weather per city that someone is searching for and return that. So let's go ahead and implement that. I'm going to add a quick cache here. So private read only, iMemory cache. I'm gonna say weather cache actually here. So weather cache. And that's a new memory cache and the default settings are enough for what we're doing. And I'm going to get that. And I'm going to say that if circuit breaker dot circuit state is open or isolated, and I'm gonna explain what isolated is, then return cache dot get weather response for that city, right? So if the circuit is open or isolated, and isolated basically means that someone has went and manually isolated and opened the circuit. If you use the isolate method to open the circuit, it will behave as if the circuit is open. However, it will not automatically recover. You have to have code that goes on and calls the reset method. What's also pretty interesting is that Poly actually keeps the last exception and the last handled result. Now, in our case, the last handled result will be a bad result, so we cannot really use it. But in your case, you might be able to use it. So keep that in mind. And now they have this state, I can go ahead and I can say var weather over here and weather cache set city comma weather and then return the weather. So we're caching the last weather for that city as it's being requested. And now look what that does with the whole system being in place. So I'm running the flaky API and I'm going to run the weather forecast API. Here we go. 
So we're going to say fail false. So this all works. Now and we have the last France weather cached. And then I'm going to go and say fail true. And I'm going to try to make this break. So the circuit breaker will go open now. And as you can see, even though I say F true, it is actually detecting that. Let's see it here. Let's debug the code. It's going here. It's saying that the circuit state is open and then it's returning the cached value, which is within the cache. So even though the system we're calling to is down, we check using the circuit breaker that the thing is open. It cannot accept any requests and we handle that our way protecting the thing we're consuming because we're not sending any traffic we know is likely to fail and instead we're just serving something that which will work fine for a given period of time again if this lasts for like five hours you probably don't want to go down that route but in that scenario i would hope you have alerts that get triggered and then you see why that call is failing and maybe talk to that API and see if they have a known issue or not. It's a very intuitive pattern. You can find all the code underneath. You want to go ahead and play around with it. It is by far one of my favorite resilience patterns just because of how many things you can do with it and how flexible you can be. It really gets you to think, okay, if that thing fails, what can I afford to do? How can I deal with that in a fallback scenario? Okay, for how long maybe can I do that? When do I trigger an alert? When There's so many things you can do. I absolutely love that. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe more. Click the like this, ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.